So, as I said, um, I would now like uh, for Amory uh, Granbear to join me. Uh, Amory is the uh, president of the board of directors and co-inventor of the fragrance technology. Welcome. First of all, good afternoon, everyone, for those of you who are here in the room and those of you who are with us uh, online watching the streaming. I'm very happy, absolutely delighted to be here. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak uh, up front. Um, let me give you um, a, l a little bit of an update about about the, the fragrance uh, project. As Emmanuel just said, we're going to be saying a lot about the fragrance technology this afternoon. Uh, of course, the fragrance technology doesn't just uh, did it just happen. It's been developed. Uh, we have a very uh, clear legal framework we operate in, and I would like to give you just a few simple reminders about uh, fragrance. And uh, this is um, the uh, Frogans Technology Conference number seven. And week after week, month after month, we are taking new people on board, new stakeholders, uh, people who are sometimes working directly with OP3FT, but also people who are, you know, who have their own activities, their own business, but who are using OP3FT. And uh, Jean. Emmanuel, I hope I did not say what you were about to say. No, you did not. You did not. Uh, so thank you, Amory, for having accepted our invitation. Uh, I remember that in the early days, during some of the first conferences, you were here first to uh, give us a foreword before starting the conference. Uh, uh, you've always been here to tell um, our listeners about uh, the, the purpose of Frogans. Some of you who are listening uh, may, may already know the answer to this question, uh, but still, I would like to add it one more time. What is it that is has that, that has been the drivers of uh, uh, the Frogos technology, which you uh, launched with uh, Alexi Tabas? What was your initial objective? Well, the objective, first of all, I should say, hasn't changed. We have kept the same object objective from the very outset, which uh, we started back at the end of uh, 1999 uh, with Alexi Tamas, uh, whom I knew before then, uh, before that year. Uh, we started the work, started to work together, and uh, once again, the objective. Uh, the objective of the programs project has always been the same. The same. It's about offering uh, an innovative and simple way of communicating on the internet. So we developed the concept uh, at the end of the 1990s. So of course you have to put yourself back in that period. Um, internet was only a few years old in 1999. Ten years before, back in, uh, it, it started in uh, 1989, 1990, in, in Geneva, where Tim Berners-Lee invented the web in order for people to publish content online in an open way, in a very distributed way as well. And in that decade, uh, right in the 1990s, we saw internet, the internet momentum. Uh, things changed. Pe people were able to uh, publish content, control content, and little by little, as years went by, things became more and more complex, technically speaking, complex. Um, more and more screens appeared. And uh, of course, we're not even talking about smartphones or handheld devi devices. This came later with Apple in 2007, even if there were some, a few multi-device initiatives before that uh, that period, we, uh, we felt we needed something simple, something truly intuitive. 
in order to communicate, communicate on the Internet. So that's when you launched the Frogons project in the uh, early 2000s. And since then, it uh, the project ripened. Uh, where do things, where do you stand today? Well, our, our first baselines, uh, for first uh, Frogons technology words were uh, about developing a universal technology, a technology available no matter what device, no matter what screen you use. This is what we, this was the objective we, you know, decided very early. Alexi Tama had, had this technical vision. He still has this technical vision. Uh, I have been working more on the end user uh, part. Uh, typically, when things get too complicated for me, after a few clicks, I consider that if you, if you don't understand after three clicks, it's because it's a bad technology. So at the in the late 90s, we started to realize that screens, there were going to be more and more of them. We also quickly realized that uh, security was uh, uh, going to be a major issue. And this is really what has driven Frogon's technology. Simplicity for end users, as well as simplicity for content um, publishers, uh, including graphic designers uh, and so on. So simplicity on both ends, for those who make the content and those who use the content. On this uh, slide, you have three bullet points. The first one is need for simplicity, which is still very much the case today. Then there is a need for pace, which doesn't really translate well in French. Um, need for pace um, at the right moment, at the right time, do we need pace? We're not. It's not about 4G, 5G, 8G. That's not what I mean by pace. Instead, what we mean is that for users, uh, if you're an internet user, no matter where you are, no matter what you do, no matter if you live in, a, in an urban area or in a very remote rural area, uh, no matter if you have tons of bandwidth or no, or no bandwidth, uh, we want content to be available within a split second for you, no matter who you are and where you are. And it's a need for pace. So, of course, Mobile devices confirmed this. Um, it confirmed the fact that screens are everywhere, and screens are a tremendous opportunity in many areas. But it's also become hell, in a sense. Hell for those who are trying to publish, but who can't, who can't uh, and who, are, uh, who found themselves struggling because of a lack of resolution, because of a problem with the operating system, because of the size of the device, because of uh, proprietary information or open source informa uh, information. So, Frogons is trying to address these considerations. And last but not least, of course, there is uh, the cost issue, the cost of sheer creation, of course, and the cost of time. And uh, We've always been trying to develop things with, uh, but while limiting the costs, the production costs. So these are really the starting points. Um, so again, as I said, simplicity and security. Security doesn't appear on this slide, but we didn't want security to become one of our arguments, uh, one of our uh, buzzwords. Um, you know, when you have an open system, um, the corollary is that the more open a technology is, the more you could be confronted with potential security breaches. I think we all know this. There are millions of people using, using, using Internet every day. And there are blatant uh, security problems with Internet. Security for us is, of course, very important. And you will see that uh, uh, we've made some important decisions. Sometimes we've decided to deliberately restrict, restrict 
certain functions regarding the web um, and, and with other systems that are used for, for uh, web publishing to avoid any security issues. Two more things. Two more things we had not anticipated and which uh, appeared to be absolutely essential and which are also recognized by Frogan's personal data, first of all, with Alexis Temas. Um, uh, we, we didn't really uh, look at this uh, that much, uh, but uh, today, when you open and you read the paper, when you listen to the news, when you, if you listen what Tim Berners-Lee said last week in San Francisco, again, he invented the web. Well, he is recognizing that um, today the web is controlled by closed platforms. Facebook, Google, uh, now don't get me wrong, they're very accessible. More than one billion uh, Facebook users, uh, uh, millions of people who use uh, uh, Google, but the fact is uh, we don't know where some of the information we submit is going. And so over the past 10 to 15 years, uh, the question of uh, data privacy emerged. And there again, we will see what the Frogans technology can do, uh, how Frogans uh, can address the data privacy uh, issue. Last but not least, there is the question of internationalization. We knew from the outset that we could not limit ourselves to Latin characters. Um, uh, we knew it. Uh, however, it's always been a technical challenge to, uh, to publish in different languages. We've done a huge amount of work. And today, you can register a, a Frogan's address and 179 languages. You can use different scripts, including in Hebrew, in Arabic, going from left to right or from right to left. So we want it to be a universal player, and we are a universal player. Well, thank you very much, Amory. You said it is necessary. We want to have to have an open system, to be open. That is, has been one of the key drivers as well. It's something you had in mind from the early days. You talked about Facebook, you talked about some big private players. In 2012, OP3FT was created to actually carry the vision of uh, Frogans. Right, I did not mention this because it seems to be uh, many years ago. We created a startup company with Alexi. Um, it's called STG Interactive. So the company was created, and uh, we worked hard, and we were able to find people who were willing to financially support us, who were willing to invest the project. So we have private investors. Business leaders, non-institutionals who have accepted to support us financially to create and build the uh, Frogans project. So between 2005 and 2008, we spent a lot of time in the U.S. We did road shows in uh, Silicon Valley. And uh, of course, we found a lot of people there who uh, are very knowledgeable about internet users. You know exactly what they want. We have a lot of. We saw a lot of developers who said, "Stop, enough. We won't use new technologies if we don't know who will own them and what will happen to them." There are interesting sites like Google. If you go to Google Grave, for example, on Google Grave, you will see that there are dozens, hundreds of initiatives. Uh, that were created by you know technicians and people here and there, uh, who sometimes were bought out by big players who changed everything, who changed the legal considerations, who changed the business model, made it a pay model when it was free before, and all this went very rapidly. Uh, Frogan's technology was part of this period. Some people said, 
we're not interested. We will uh, uh, embrace one, the technology once once we understand, uh, once we better understand the future of the technology. So traveling to the U.S. was very helpful. We realized we needed to make important decisions. And with Alexi in 2010, 2011, we talked to our shareholders and we, we, we created a fund. Uh, Julie Laurent, who is our head of legal, uh, she doesn't like the word, but uh, that's how I call it. It's a fund. It's a non-for-profit fund. And uh, we have a general interest mission, not just in France, even if there are some uh, fiscal reasons, tax reasons. Um, we, we, we have OP3FT. It's Organisation pour la Promotion la protection et le progrès de la technologie Frogance. It's the Organization for the Promotion, Protection and Progress of the Frogance Technology. That's what OP3FT stands for. So it's, it's, it's a bit long. Organization for the Promotion, Protection and Progress of the Frogance Technology. In short, OP3FT, it's so much better, it's so much easier. Sorry, it is an acronym, but it works better. And uh, so it is actually in the statutes of OP3FT, and uh, uh, we have the, uh, the, the the three Ps: promotion, protection, and progress. These are the clear missions we have at OP3FT. So we we have a very clear roadmap. That is in the statutes of OP3FT. Um, in a nutshell, uh, and before wrapping up, um, if you're not familiar with the with the project. Um, why do we have this endowment fund in France? Well, simply because the shareholders of the, the startup, including Alexi and myself, decided to uh, make all developments uh, available for free, um, but all developments between 1999 and 2012. We're talking about appro approximately 15 million euros worth of, 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 of investments. So they're now. Um, under the umbrella of this non-for-profit organization, which is making this all the technology available for free. And if someone says, well, what will happen to you if a big company buys you? Well, today we have an answer. Uh, and the answer is, we're sticking to what our mission has always been, been uh, at, at OP3FT, and things won't change. As you can see on on this screen, um, what you can see is that OP3FT is completely independent. It is an independent organization. It is acting in the uh, in the, the interest of the public. When I say it is independent, um, if you read the statutes of OP3FT, you will see that once the system is open, there will be public consultation procedures. We are a true open technology. Um, Frogance technology is developed uh, according to the principles of an open standard, which, which means it can be open. It can be used for free anywhere by anyone. Thank you, Amori. So you talked about the technical aspects of op 3 OP3FT, but there are teams behind these words. So, could we say a few words about these people? Who are the people of OP3FT? Well, OP3FT is organized around this endowment fund, and we have three ad administrators Alexi Tamas, myself, and Alain Martel, whom we knew, we'd known for a long time, and who's long worked with the French Council of board members. So we, he shared with us his um, best practices in terms of good governance. So we had uh, very good examples of good governance with him. Okay, we have no slides any anymore, but I'll tell you more about it. Okay, there were no figures on the slides anyway, so I can continue talking. So at the moment, Julie, you stop me if I'm making a mistake, but we have 34 contributors to the Frogans project. So that's half of them are employed in France. 
So, if anyone wants to join us, uh, this is a beautiful project. And we have service providers, but, you know, we're working in a modern way, so you can be an entrepreneur and work with us four days a week, and you're part of the team. So, it's 50-50. Uh, we have 50% uh, of the 30 people who are entrepreneurs themselves and work on the project for like two days a week. So as I said, protection, promotion, progress, this is translated uh, into a technical team in charge of developing the Frogan's plan, which is at the heart of the system, because that's what's going to make it possible for anyone to consult or display a Frogan's uh, a site. Then you have software developers and you have uh, those who develop technical specific specifications because when you have an open standard you have to publish uh, technical specification. That's a paper hard copy document, 50-60 pages roughly. Then we have a legal team uh, in charge of drafting charters. So charters, think about it. We want technology to be usable in many different countries, with many different uh, jurisdictions, with many different cultures. So we had to find the smallest common denominator and then grow from that and draft charters that would comply with all the applicable legal systems in the countries where users will be using the Frogan's technology. And then we have a promotion staff. Uh, we like the word marketing, but we don't use it. We don't use it because in our mission of uh, uh, public interest, we called it innovation fostering. And I don't think there is in any word in French for that. But anyway, we call it uh, innovation fostering. Uh, knowledge sharing uh, that's related to all our publications on the web. What you need to understand is that our mission is to build up resources so that anybody can use the technology. And we. Jean Marie was a bit ambitious. He said it was available to everyone. I know he's a tough guy, but he can't be available to anyone. So we want to be available to anyone who would start a serious initiative with using Fogan's technology. But given the limited size of our team at the moment, we won't be able to uh, answer questions from the world around. So we want to create kind of a platform so that that's that the ecosystem is going to take ownership of and then we have those people working with Frogan's technology to come on board and help out. So these technologies have value. It's They're available on YouTube or Yuku in, in China and they have as much value today as they will in the future because there is a certain number of existing resources which are available for free on, on the web through these video platforms and if someone has an interest in six months and wants to understand a technical part of the uh, Frogan's technology, well he can use one of these tutorials available on YouTube or UQ. Quickly, Amory, are you telling me I was too long? Not really, but it's true that we have so much to say that it has to take a bit of time. So one question is a non-profit organization. Okay, employees, okay, service providers, fine. But any work needs to be paid for. So tell us how OP3FT is funded at the moment. What's the business model you've chosen? Okay, so we've been very conservative in that respect and we've not invented anything new. We thought that the web was a beautiful instrument in one respect. And this will be another difference with OP3FT in the future anyway, but we used the, the web. But so we used, what, what's the web? It's JavaScript, CSS, 
HTML and what makes it possible. And all these technologies are, are available for free. They're available for free within the World Wide Web Consortium. But it's funded differently than OP3FT. So who would be funding the Frogans technology? At the moment, uh, it's SDG Interactive, but in kind of a secondment type of contract. But tomorrow, with the Frogans addresses, because in the infrastructure of the project, only uh, address registering or domain name uh, s uh, creation is something that you have to pay. So you have to pay for being in the registrar. And you have to talk to these type of structures in order to register your Frogan's address. And this comes at a cost, a cost which is defined by the registrar, the one, the, the registrar that registers the addresses. And STG Interactive the initial company that invented the project, they kept one key function that they've always managed. It's a bit like VeriSign in the US that gives the .com. We've developed an expertise in operating the uh, global database of, data of Frogan's addresses, which are resolved on the internet at the moment. And to operate this, we need to have a series of resolution servers with an infrastructure and uh, interconnections, and this comes at a cost. So the cost is covered by the uh, payments made by those who want to register a Frogan's address. OB3FT, as a non-profit organization, was not allowed to carry out this kind of business. So it's the creator of OB3FT that has this mission with a secondment type of contract. Like, there is a secondment type of contract with ICANN, which is the um, Internet Name and Something Corporation, which is, by and large, the regulator of the Internet. And they have a registrar contract with the entities operating GTLD extensions, such as .com or .fr or .whatever country. So OP3FT is 15% is funded with 15% of the income coming from the uh, payments of Frogan's addresses. And so long as there aren't any Frogan's addresses registered, because right now we're still in the pre-opening of a system which will be made available to the public at large on October 11th. So we have 1.8 million euros that we need to find per each year. And that's the budget of OP3FT. And this is what makes it possible for us to continue being op operational. And over the last two years and the figures we publish on our website, we spend more money in order to speed up uh, the process and in order to grow. And we have, thanks to our control authority, that's the prefect, that's the government, we can ask for donations from the general public. So we posted on light uh, a, a, a site which is called donate uh, op3ft.org, op3ft so it's to get donations from the public. But when we suggest people they should make donations to OP3FT, it's not for us. It's for employment, innovation, economic development, because we share with all the people who work with us, we share the same belief. Sometimes some technologies are destructive and destroy jobs. And it's true, it's the Schumpeter's theory. But there are technologies which we hope Frogans is going to be one of these. They're just redistributing the cards and they allow people who've been uh, left behind with the difficulty of creating apps for the web. You know, when, when, you, are, when you have HTML language, uh, uh, starting programming can become very tricky and very complex. But with Frogans, it becomes very simple. So that's creating new economic business to lots of people who, over the last years, were left 
on the side of the road because these technologies were evolving too fast and I hope I've been clear enough about the model now. Well, users and people watching us will tell us if you were and they can ask questions. Don't hesitate, use the mailing list. You post on Twitter and I'll be handed in your questions. So thank you so much, Amory, for uh, giving us some background about the Frogan's uh, project. So there you go. We are uh, starting everything. People need to be doing things and carrying out initiatives for the Frogan's technology to be accessible to everyone and to be used by a maximum number of people on a maximum number of connected screens. Because I'm going to talk about connected, connected screens because people talk about smartphones and, and computers, but internet can be available everywhere. So we will be available on any type of screen. Yeah, like interactive TV, for instance. You have many TV screens which are connected today. Absolutely, you're right. So thank you, Amory, for this uh, background. On est très en retard. Okay, we are running late already. We just started and we're already running late. So let's talk about technical things. Alexi, uh, unless you have something that you want to add, unless you want to add to what Amori said about the context and about the environment, because you're the co-founder and co-creator of the Frogan's technology. But now you're going to put on your technician's hat and tell us how the Frogan's technology is developed in-house by OB3FT and then by people out there. And that's going to be a perfect transition with the format. So how can we keep all these promises? Well, hello. Good afternoon. I'll be quick, because Amory presented many elements which also cover technical aspects of the project. The Frogan's project is not just a computer science pro project. It's also a project that has administrative, business, legal implications that require uh, quite a large team. It's not just three guys in a garage. We need more to carry out the mission that Amory presented. So placing a software layer on the internet network is a bit complex, uh, far more complex than what we anticipated. And at the moment, what I see with the teams uh, working with the project or with our users, some of them are here, others are remote, but they're using the Frogan's technology. And I'm seeing the convergence of the different components, technical components and legal components that we've put together. You know, the setting up of OP3FT was one of the major steps. And I see things getting organized so that we can disseminate very quickly. I see that our teams, after months, uh, uh, after some conferences we had since September, we showed uh, the possibility of developing sites. And we see our own in-house teams working on releases and releasing new software, adding functions, and this in an increasingly efficient manner. So this is a very good prospect for the month to come and for the mission of OP3FT. Now, regarding the technical part, I think we were planning to have an exchange, but as we're running late, maybe we want to move on with the presentation so that we can understand the different aspects into details about the uh, power of FSDL, the FSDL language that we use to, for developing Frogan sites. But we can also talk about new functionalities that were made available very recently by OP3FT to allow very advanced and enhanced navigation experience with a, a dynamic Frogan site to have data from the user and 
a whole set of parameters that can be included for the dissemination of the site. Okay, Alexi, if you agree, you stay with us. And in my opinion, as we have no time to talk about the environment right now, it's a good way to talk about the development of this format, if you agree. Perfect. The first thing I wanted to say that at the moment, uh, all the technology is available, everything's available, and of course, some adjustments will be made in the in the coming weeks because this is still the alpha version of the Frogan's player. But the various dynamic bricks uh, are available, so tests can be started on the large scale. Address resolution is available, so uh, Frogan star addresses can help disseminate the first Frogan site between users, which is far more simple than sharing configuration file, if you know what I'm talking about. And it's for free. All the, all the Frogan's technology is available for free. And thanks to the environment we've set up, you can rely on this technology in order to have uh, sustainable development with the long-term commitments, even lifetime commitments in terms of ownership rights. So we are in this environment, and now the next steps are going to be, well, the um, making the, this technology available to the public at large on October the 11th. But before that date, we can start doing very, working on very interesting things. Well, thank you so much, Amory.